Welcome back to another episode of The Good All Show, where we learn how to grow, motivate you to grind, and encourage you to give. I am James Goodall, your host, and it is warm out, guys. I mean, it is 70 degrees. Spring is in the air. I can smell the the smell, if that's how you want to word it, of cut grass. I am ready. And we got spring break this week coming up. We are headed to Tennessee, Gatlinburg for a family vacation. We haven't had a family vacation in a while where all of my family, my two brothers, my 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 mom and dad, um, and my aunt are, are going. Um, my, my aunt was supposed to go, but my other aunt is uh, has been fighting ovarian cancer and she is very sick. It's, you know, basically any day now that she's going to pass away and go to heaven. Um, but, you know, she's not able to go, but we're going to, hopefully she can make it through the week and if, if something happens, we'll, we'll head down there. Um, and go to the funeral right away, but you guys could pray for her, pray for the family, especially, you know, it's their mom, my cousin's mom, so they are, they're ready to, they are, she's okay with it, she's accepted it, you know, she can barely talk, but she recognizes people, so that puts a little bit of damper on it, but we're, ex- we're excited, spring break is here, I'm gonna have a conversation with the guy, Briar Longcare, and he's from Westfield, Indiana, so maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes, two hours from here, um, pretty close, and he's 20 years old, has a lawn care company, so I'm excited to see that. But I was talking to a guy, and he, he one of my, actually one of the kids that I coach, he's not a kid anymore, he's married and everything, but one of the guys that I coached in high school, and I was talking, he said, hey, I listen to the podcast, man. I'm like, sweet, it's a lawn care podcast, you do painting for a guy. And he's like, man, I've really been thinking about starting my own company. I printed up, I printed up flyers, printed up business cards, I mean, and, you know, I told him, I was like, hey, once you get that, that, that itch, Right. Once you do a couple jobs and you start to see, hey, I can make more money in two days than I do in a week, it's it's full steam ahead, right? He he said, yeah, I just secured a, like a, I think it was a four thousand, maybe a six thousand, a four thousand dollar painting job that'll pay, probably take me, you know, on weekends and at night, maybe a couple weeks, but I'm gonna make more in three weeks working the weekends than I do working for my normal job. And if that's you, man, do it. You know, do it on at nights. Do it on the weekends because you never know what it'll turn into. Like, he might look back five years from now and have his own painting business where if he just would have stayed working for the same company, he'd be making good. He'd be making money and, and fine. There's no there's no risk in that. But, dude, where there's no risk, there's no reward. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited that you guys are listening. And, and if, you, if you are thinking about starting a business, this is the best time. Best time to start a business because businesses are going out of business because they they're not run right. And you could take over that market. And, and I'm excited for him. I'm excited for guys that are listening. And I'm, I appreciate them saying it. I was ta- thinking about this and then we're going to have this conversation. But first thing is the book, The One Thing. This is by far, okay, not by far. This is in my top five business books. You have to read this book. All the, biz- all the books that I talk about, we've actually had 15 books that we've talked about throughout the 15 podcasts. And this book of the week, The One Thing, it is... Uh, I talk about it all the time. Like if you if you watch me anytime on TikTok, you hear me talk about the pumpkin plan. You hear me talk about profits first, and you hear me talk about one thing by Gary Keller. And you have to read this book. It is if you do not have a ten year goal, if you don't have a goal, then you don't know what what the most important thing is to do today. And that's what he talks about. The main thing that I got out of it is what's your ten year goal? Are you doing the most important thing to reach that goal? Right. So ten years from now. What do you, where do you want to be? Okay, so five years, where do you have to be to get to that 10-year? Now, two years from now, where do you have to be to get to that five-year goal, that 10-year goal? And then what do you have to do today, the most important thing to do today to reach that? And, and what that means is, is sometimes we, we spend a lot of time on stuff that's not making, helping us get to that goal, right? So if, if for, me, for me, it was, I, can, I need to, my, my goal is to train people to cut the grass, not cut the grass, and I still cut grass. I'm not to that point yet, um, but I'm cutting grass less and less because I'm trying to train guys to cut grass, and that's how we can grow. That, that's how we can get to that that ten year that ten year goal. And ten year goals are going to change. But are you doing the most important thing today that that gets you to that ten year goal? The one thing you have to read it. I'm telling you, if you haven't read Pumpkin Plan Profits First and One Thing, read it before or listen to it before two weeks is up. Listen to those three books because it, it will definitely change your life. It changed my life. Last thing I want to talk before before the phone call, profitability. Some of us are so focused on gross, 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 get more business, get more business, get more business, 
that we're not focused on net profit. After everything's paid, what are we actually making? So think about it. If you're making, if you're bringing in two hundred thousand dollars, but you're only profiting ten percent, which a lot of us are, a lot of the entrepreneurs, a lot of lawn care business owners, we was, we were. Two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, we were, we were profitability was ten percent, if that. Two hundred thousand dollars you're bringing in, and your profitability is ten percent. That's twenty k, right? Twenty thousand dollars. That's not bad. I mean, after you get paid, that's, that's pretty good. But just think about if you drop down to a hundred thousand, you got rid of all of the clients that weren't the best. You weren't making good money. You're making decent. They they weren't. Um, they, they're 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 bad customers. They're annoying. You hate doing their yard, or you hate doing their um, electric. You hate doing their painting jobs because they're always going to complain. You drop down to a hundred thousand, but you profit twenty percent. Twenty thousand dollars you profit. So like, it's not about how much money you make; it's how much profitability you are. You can do half as much and make the same amount. Do I think you need to drop down? Everybody in this that's listening to this needs to drop down to half as much as you're doing. No. But if you're not profitable, why are you not as profit? Why aren't you at 20%? Because if it's just you and one other guy, you should be at 25, 30% profitability. And, and after you do your numbers, uh, is that. And that's what I was thinking about because that's what we did. We were at $600,000 a year four years ago. We, the, three years ago, we dropped down to 400000 but we profited the same. And that is exactly why we focused on the most profitable stuff. We are going to have a conversation with um, Briar Lawn Care from Westfield. Hope you guys enjoy this. Appreciate you guys. If this helps you, share it. If you've already watched this much, that means you, it's helped and you enjoy it. So share this, like it. I know when I'm watching TikTok or I'm on Facebook or I'm on Instagram or I'm on YouTube, I never like anything because I just forget. So hey, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're at 2,000 subs now on YouTube. 2,000. And I, we just started. So I appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoy this conversation. Hello. Hey, man. What's going on? It's going great. How you doing, James? I'm good. I'm good. I just uh, just introduced you. I said that you're from Westfield, Indiana, and Briar Lawn Care, and you're 20 years old. So I appreciate you jumping on the call, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I know. I know. I messaged you maybe two weeks ago. I said, Hey, we need to get a conversation. We're not able to do it. And then I was able to get you, get a hold of you, and I, I was looking through my messages. I'm, Man, I dude, I just forgot to message this guy back. So I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, not getting pissed off at me. No, no, no worries at all. I, I know you guys had some snow come through, so yeah, no yeah. worries. Yeah, yeah, we had some snow, um, and that you know, with with that, it sometimes it takes three days to recover and everything. So, no, sure. I appreciate appreciate you coming on, man. So, where where is the company out? How'd you start it? When'd you start it? And then, more importantly, like why'd you start it? So, uh, like you said, we're we're located in uh, in Westfield, Indiana, right next to Carmel. Most people know Carmel. Uh, just north of Indianapolis. I uh, started it with a buddy of mine, 50-50. We were uh, in high school, my, uh, I believe, summer after my junior year. Um, and we kind of just started sort of cutting a few lawns in the neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods. Probably had 10, 10 a week maybe. Uh, kind of just did it as a hobby, make a couple extra bucks uh, that we can go spend with our friends. A uh, year after that, this would be, uh, let's see, uh, 2020, grew a little bit more. Um, you know, with COVID, we weren't in school, so we had a little bit more time to go out and, uh, and, and work. So we probably had 20, 25, maybe 30 on a good week uh, of, of just lawn mowing. And then, uh, and then this past year, it kind of blew up a little bit more than we were expecting. Um, so we had, you know, 50, 60 peak season, 70 lawns a week that we were doing, just me and my buddy. Um, and we were, we were having a good time with it. And uh, we got to the end of this year. And uh, we're both actually in school. So I go to school online at IUPUI downtown. And uh, my, my buddy it was in a trade school uh, for aviation mechanic work. And uh, he kind of fell in love with that. So at the end of the season, he, he decided he was going to go do that. And, and he's already super successful in that field. Yeah. Um, so I, I took over um, here at the end of this year and kind of made the company official. Because when we started, we were in high school. It's kind of under the radar. We weren't an official LLC. Uh, you know, everything was just cash. Um, and so, you know, when I come to start a real company and I'm looking around, I'm like, man, this, you know, everyone thinks that we just started, um, cause this is the first time that we've, you know, we've done stuff officially, but, um, January, 2022, just, just a couple months ago, uh, got the official LLC formed. And, uh, really since that moment, it's really taken off even in the winter time, which has been kind of cool. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's the background of the, of the business. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I mean, roughly you 
been in business for two months, but I mean, you started three years ago, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So three 100%. years ago. And, and that 50, 50 split, you're just like, you know, my, when I was in high school, just making some money for, for spending money or whatever yep. for, with 100%. your friends. Yeah. And, and so at one point, at one point, like, okay, I guess my question is, is this something that you're trying to pursue for the next 20 years, like grow a business? Or are you just like, while I'm in school, like, what are you in school for? So uh, I was in school. I started my freshman year. So I graduated high school in 2020, fall of 2020, started IEPY uh, doing sports management. And I, I've, I've had the opportunity to intern with the Indianapolis Colts this past season. And, nice. and, and, and really, it was kind of a decision that when my buddy left um, at the end of this past year, it was like, okay, I can scrap the lawn mowing business and I can go work in sports you know, and work a, a nine to five or more for the next 10 years before I actually start doing what I want. Mm-hmm. Or I can go ahead and just pursue this business full time. And I'd not only love the lawn mowing and the, the landscaping and just being outside and doing the work, but I just fell in love with the business aspect of it. Yeah. The, the, the communicating with people, the finances, you know, being able to do everything from accounting to bookkeeping, like just absolutely fell in love with it. So this is something that, you know, I'm looking to grow big time. Um, and it's something that, you know, in the last two months, we've gone from, from 50 or 60 lawns to 130, really? um, since January, 2022. So this, it, it's really taken off and, uh, and, and, and kind of handed me a career. So I'm still in school, just trying to get a degree. Yeah. Uh, some people told me you'll never regret getting a degree. So that's what I'm doing right now, but I'm all online. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, th- I think that's true. I think you're never yeah. going to re- look back and be like, Oh, I wish I wouldn't have got a degree. I think you're definitely, that's, that's. I would agree with that statement. So the big, the one couple things about that first is what falling in love with the business side, I think is huge, man, because some people just fall in love with painting, right? Or just electrical and they don't like the finances and the business side of it and communicating, communicating with clients. Well, if you don't like that side of it, then it's hard, harder to grow, right? It's harder to grow because I think eventually, like I don't, I like cutting grass, but I do, I don't like cutting grass as much as I did 10 years ago. Right. Yep. And so at some point I'm going to be like, ah, do I really want to go out and cut grass in 90 degree weather? I still yep. like it. I still enjoy it. And 10 years ago, five years ago, even f- two years ago, I loved it. But falling in love with the business finance, the, the, the nitty gritty, cause you can always hire somebody, you know, to, to cut grass and, for sure. and, but you know, the other side of it, you got it, you got to handle for a while. So I guess my question is to do 130, ha- who have you hired and how did you hire those guys? I mean, you can't do it all yourself. For sure, for sure, 100. percent So, um, we had a little bit of a, a, a merger with another company, um, a guy who graduated from my high school um, years ago, and he was looking to get out of the business. He kind of reached out to me and my partner earlier in the summer, uh, this past summer, and you know, hey, are you guys interested in possibly, you know, buying me out or whatever? And, and we were like, no, you know, we're kind of just doing this for fun, and we're just us two. We don't have room to hire people, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when this, all this stuff happened, I, I thought, you know, I might as well reach out to this guy and see, see where he's at. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm still trying to get out of business, but no one wants it. <laughs> so, um, you know, no, no one he contacted to yeah. was willing to take it over. And he was right. I, I've listened to your stuff for a long time. Okay. And so when you're talking about density, man, I, I, I don't know if I ever agreed with anything in terms of lawn mowing more. Yeah. So when he started, you know, breaking me down his lawns and where they're at, they're all right. I mean, I probably don't go more than 10 miles, nice. um, probably less than that for, for everything. Um, and so I reached out to him and, and we kind of had some, some talks and he wants to go into pools and patios. So we made a little agreement, you know, he can have his, his, his pools and patio, um, but I was going to take over all his lawns and I had to pay him a little bit for it, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, it was nothing, nothing too serious. Mm-hmm. And with that, um, some of his employees that I actually personally know from high school, uh, they also came along to me and then I hired my younger brother. Um, I was on indeed for a little bit, hired a couple more people from there, uh, that are in the area. And so, yeah, I got, uh, we, we got, we got a couple of full-time guys, a couple of part-time guys. And, and then that, that's that. It's crazy when you start to do like the right things in business, how like things just happen, like things just like come along, right? <laughs> That's like, so I, true. Yeah, because I feel like if you were all messed up and like you didn't really, like you've learned a lot in three years, but like if you didn't know what you were doing, like, I think this opportunity would come along and you, you might not be able to handle it, but that's, it's sweet how opportunities just come along when, when you're doing the right thing. So when was this though? So have you done those 130 yards or yet, or, or you you bought that at the end of last year, the fall or something? Yes. So, so we bought at the end of last year and, um, you know, I got, I currently got a, a spreadsheet in front of me. We already, you know, went through the exchange or whatever. I have all the clients already touched base with all of his clients. Okay. And, nice. 
Um, so we haven't actually started cutting yet, which yeah. is well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for the season, you know, kind of a, a, a trial run. Um, but, but yeah, what, what you were talking about, I don't want to take the floor too much. You cut me off whenever, but when you were talking about, um, you know, really getting in the business aspect of it and fall in love with it, I mean, it, it's definitely some people look at it like it's annoying. I mean, I sat there for the whole month of December, January, February, um, you know, just, just banging away, um, spreadsheets, you know, I got my estimated income and I've tried to think of every single cost of good that I'm going to have all the salaries that I got to pay hourly pay, whatever. And just trying to find, figure all that stuff out. And I just fell in love with that, like I said. So, so I, I think we're in a good spot. But. Dude, and first of all, like, I like having conversations with guys because I don't want to, like, talk at, like, I want to talk the least. I want to ask questions and, like, get, because I think people learn more from that. So, like, if you have something you want to talk about, just talk about it. Because, you know, <laughs> I think, I think over the last, I think the 14 podcasts we've had so far, I think I've only talked, like, twice. I haven't had a phone call. And that's because I, I messed up. I didn't have, I like forgot to record the conversation or something, but so and, yeah. And that's, so you're fine. You're fine. Um, yeah, I think with, with the business aspect, I'm excited about this year too, man. And you're dude, that's how I am. I mean, I mean, I'm busy. I, I coach basketball and, and you know, I got other stuff I want to do in the winter, but when I come in the office, man, and I'm like crunching numbers and I'm saying, okay, which yard is not as profitable, which one yard do I need mm-hmm. to go up on or which yard is too a little bit out of the way or how do I, how can we p- become more profitable? What, what can we offer that's, that makes it a little bit better or, or yep. whatever. So how, um, those, those a hundred and those 130 yards, is it, do you feel like, Hey, I got this or man, this is, this is, this is a, like not a, not stressful or not like, but it's exciting. It's a, an exciting like rush. Like how, how do you, do you feel like, Hey, this, we're going to get this, this is going to be easy or you got, or it's going to be, Hey man, this is going to be, this is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great question. The exciting rush is definitely the feeling. I mean, I, m- most people that are, that I've talked to at least in the landscape realm, you know, lawn care realm or whatever, when it gets to this February, March, and you're like, all right, I mean, Westfield, I'm not in Westfield right now, but I saw it's 70 degrees there today. Yeah. So it, I heard it's beautiful in Indiana right now. So, it, I, you know, it, it's getting close to time and I'm, I'm getting excited. But um, talking about, you know, whether we think we're going to be able to handle it, or it's going to be successful. I for sure think it'll be successful. I, I, I actually am in the position where I'm actually starting to, to, to figure out some marketing stuff because I think with the with the employees that I have and, you know, I, like I said, I, I know them. A, I know them a bit. I really think that I can even grow more this year, just from that one, that number 130, I I really think I can get up to 160, um, and stay in that dense area. So I think it's going to be, you know, we're, we're get through the spring rush or whatever. And we're going to be like, man, like we got more time to do more work this week. Um, and and so I'm, I'm, that's what I'm kind of discussing right now and putting together some, some door hangers and, uh, some stuff like that. Um, just to figure out how we can grow from there, but yeah, definitely excited. And I, I definitely think that we're definitely going to be able to handle it. So, and then the 130, are you, is that, um, is that something where I'm trying to pound like those, okay, let me, I guess, let me ask you from last year. Last year you had about 50. Did you do a lot of business like bushes, mulch, um, maybe some aeration, anything like that from those clients or were, were you able to market those specific clients and then those 130, are you able to hit those and get 50 bush jobs from those clients? Yes. So, so last year we did not do any, um, bush trimming or anything like that. So we obviously had our, our 50, we call them like our core clients. Like yeah. they were going to be there every week, no matter what. And of those, we probably did in the springtime, I'd say probably like 25 mulch jobs, probably half of them we mulched. Wow. Um, and then we didn't literally offer anything else other than, you know, if a client came out, we're like, Hey, my mulch beds are pretty nasty. Would you mind, you know, coming and, and, and getting rid of all the weeds and kind of just clean out the beds. We would do that. But mm-hmm. um, we, we both worked other jobs at the time. Like I said, we're both in school. So we were just like, let's let's mow three days a week or two or three days a week, whatever. Let's get all this done <clears throat> and then let's move on. And so towards the end of the year, we actually did probably 10 aerations just kind of as a trial run. Yeah. And it went really well. So that's a service that I'm offering this year. Uh, we're doing, you know, I, I got a list in front of me right now of, um, of confirmed uh, jobs that we're doing this spring. I got uh, 20 mulch jobs and, um, you know, spring cleanups right here, um, ready to go for in the next couple of weeks when we start. But so this year, that, that's another added challenge of just adding a little bit more than we've done in the past, but still not difficult stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, like, like, you know, like t- taking a, uh, I'm, I'm an echo guy. So taking that, you know, echo 
um, trimmer or whatever and going and, and trimming some bushes is not really difficult work at all. It's just getting to work. So, yeah. No, and and dude, that's exactly that's exactly how how I think starting a lawn business the first three four years is how you should do it. You're focusing on reoccurring revenue, and then if you have time. Like you didn't have time last year, so you didn't offer any services. And that's exactly how it should be. You had time yep. to build your 50 core clients and you, you, you did some mold jobs, which some, that's impressive, 50% or you know maybe maybe 40% of so, your, yeah. your clients you did, you did jobs for. That's, that's pretty good. But the, the reoccurring revenue, like if you got up to 130 and those, were, those turned into your core clients, like that's, oh, yeah. that, that's so big because then all you can do is grow from there. And how you're, how you're saying is mulch, bushes, and aeration, that's what we do. Like we, we don't do yep. a lot of crazy stuff and mo- some people want to do it. Some people enjoy doing patios and having equipment and all that stuff. But yep. I, think, I think when you're starting out, just learning how to price and growing from there it is huge. And man, I mean, yeah, so, so that, that, that's crazy. What is a couple of things that's, that's helped you, you know, in the lawn care business? Is it... Is it podcast? Is it is it a specific book? Is it some person that helped you along the way? Um, some system, some process? I just kind of I like asking that question. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'll say this first of all. You, like I said before, man, I've listened to your stuff for a long time, and you've been you've been extremely helpful just on the social media. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's kind of funny. I'll be sitting on my bed late at night or whatever, watching you do something. I'm like, man, I got to step up my game. This guy's out here killing it, <laughs> and I'm sitting here in bed. Like, what's what's going on? So, so yeah, for for, for sure, your stuff has been super encouraging. Well, dude, hey, let me and, let me uh, just cut you off right there. So you have 130. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you, if you get to 200, bro, that's where I'm at. I have a two. I have two hundred clients. So I'm like, dude, I gotta stop my. I can't let this guy pass me up. That's that, that's that's great, man. That that's amazing, dude. I'm just. But the other thing before I let, let you keep going, if you have anything else, but the the other thing is too is like some people heard me or Mike Andes or Florida Turf Pros or someone on YouTube, yeah. but they but they didn't apply anything. You know, yep. so everybody has access to the same um, information, but some of them just like you said, they stay on their bed. And they don't go yep. out. They don't get out, get out and apply. So, is there anything else besides um, listening to me for the last couple of years? Yeah. So, like I said, you, and then I would say even you know bigger than you that you know if anyone's listening to this and wanting to start a, a landscape company or already has one and they're trying to grow it, and just reach out to people who are more experienced and are better off than you. Yeah. Like I was absolutely blown away by how many people I reached out to. I didn't get. I, no one told me no when I asked. Hey, you know, you got time to get coffee or can I run by the shop and and swing some questions by you. So I, I don't know, you know, th- there are a couple pretty big ones in Westfield. The ones that you might be familiar with, you know, Brightview and Hiddle, they're pretty big all over the place. Yep. So, you know, I met with their, um, I don't know if you call them regional managers or whatever for the, the Westfield branch. And then a couple other guys who are uh, really successful, they're doing, you know, seven, eight million dollars a year in revenue just in the landscaping realm. Yeah. And they, they, they were, I mean, I don't know if it's just landscape people are nice or what, but they took me in and, and, and they, they gave me advice, gave me their phone number. Like, hey, man, if you have any questions, just, just text me on a you know, Tuesday afternoon. If you got a quick question, I'll answer it for you. Um, and kind of just, just, just let me get a little peek of what they do and why they're successful. And I would assume the reason why is because there's so much you know, business around, especially somewhere like Indiana where everyone needs their grass cut, that they're not really concerned about you know, someone like me coming to take their stuff. But um, I'd say one of the, the big things that I learned from that um, was – one, the business aspect of it, because again, I'm, I was a novice to that. So seeing how they did it, uh, talking to even guys who aren't in the landscape realm, who just know business, they helped me with that stuff. They helped me like, hey, man, this is what your estimated income sheet should look like for this year. Um, and, and, and when one thing is that a lot of these guys gave me information, too, that I'm like, you know what? I don't really think I need that, so I'll throw it out the window. But, um, you know, taking stuff that was really helpful and then leaving the stuff that's not has, has been huge to me. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're thinking on a bigger scale. But there's, yep. it's like it's like when you read a book. It's not like I take every single thing from a book. 100%. Every single, single thing from a podcast. Like, But is there one thing that changes my business? Because in my business over the last three years, I mean – I I've changed one or two things in the spring and I look back and be like, just like for me personally, charging cards, like that has completely changed our business and like our cash flow. Well, that was, yep. but I heard someone talk about that and I don't have no idea what else he talked about on the YouTube channel, on the YouTube video, but it's like the one or two things. And then secondly is, dude, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think, I think the painting industry, electrical industry, all of them that are people are successful. I think they they get more the real estate. They get more satisfaction 
in helping somebody along for sure. than, for than sure. adding for another sure. yard or adding another yeah. painting job, you know, like, because yep. there's always going to be, and, and you know, over the last three or four years, we've dropped probably 50, 60 yards that mm. weren't the greatest. Well, the person that's starting, he'll take those. Cause I, I took them. I took everything when we were, when we were starting out. So there's always yep. going to be, going to be jobs that, you know, that aren't going to pay a premium that a starting person will, will take. And that, that's huge, man. And, that that's available to everybody. Everybody has someone in their in their in their area that they can go and talk to, or or YouTube, or or a podcast. Man, that is that's massive. And um, yep. I think I think that's so. Second thing I'll say about that is when you when you hear you talk, when you uh, you know if you if you didn't know, dude, you don't sound like a twenty year old man. And I think that's because you're, <laughs> I think that's because you're talking to people, man. Like you do, you you sound like you're twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. You've been in business for ten years. But I think that's because of the people you talk to and hang around, man. That, For that's, sure, that's huge. What is um? Is there anything? Some, I know you're, there's a, probably a lot because you've been you've been in business for three years. Is there anything that you're doing like different now than when you started? You're like, I'm gonna do it this way. But now you're like, you look back and be like, uh, well, I'm gonna do it a little different. Or is is there really nothing? Yeah. Uh, well, it, there are definitely a few few key things. So the first is. You know, we weren't an official business, and there, in terms of bookkeeping, <laughs> we had a little list yeah. with our clients on it, and we would just go through and mark them off when we get done, and that's it. Yeah. So, uh, really using, um, you know, getting on QuickBooks. I'm not really the biggest fan of QuickBooks, but I'm on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, helps with invoicing and stuff like that. Um, and then I also used a, a, using another service. A friend of mine started a business called Captivated. Okay. Give him a little free plug. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's a it's a online um, texting. Um, and it gives you a business phone number. So I have this app where all of my business contacts come in through there. So, you know, I, I can turn it on. I can go eight to five. I can answer phones. Um, yeah. But then also it has text to pay. So the payment scheme, you were talking about charting cards, which yeah. I definitely want to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just summing up the payment scheme into a really easy way, that's a big one for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then other than that, uh, I would say a big thing that we just started this year that has been huge, especially from me going to 50 lawns, not having the most cash in the bank just because I was using it for spending money, not really trying to grow mm-hmm. and then getting kind of thrown into this situation where I got 130. One of the dudes I reached out to who owns a business did um, early bird payments. So I'm like, you know what, let's just go ahead and give this a shot. And I reached out to all the clients and I offered them, Hey, here are my services. Here's a, some changes that are going on to this season. And one of the things is I'm offering, um, you know, if you pay for the whole season up front, whether it's mowing or if you know, Hey, you know, I want you to mulch my, uh, yard in May or April. If you want to go in and pay for it, you'll get a five or ten percent discount right now. And I had twenty thousand dollars come through my account in the last two weeks. Really? Um, and and it's just from early bird payments. Now, you know, some people are like, "Well, you're not going to have the you know income coming in later." But I say, "Well, you know, mowing is a big cash flow, so um, just getting those mulch money now." I was able to go buy a couple trucks, uh, finalize my my mowers and my, my storage space. So it's been huge just to get some cash in the bank yeah. um, and able to kind of keep up with the scale. Cause I'll be honest with you, man, if, if I didn't have that um, because you know, the banks were turning me away, I'm only 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was under the radar. It, it, it looking at my tax return. It looked like I made like $2,000 in the yeah. past two years. So they weren't going to give me money. Yeah. Um, so that was a huge, huge help to me. Yeah. That's crazy because I don't know if you listened to the last conversation, but the guy said the same thing. Like he says, hey, you know, I I had these guys pay the whole year in advance, you know, for for, yeah. for mowing and stuff. And it's crazy how two two people in a row said that. And that's yeah. that's a way to get cash flow because in the spring, you know, you haven't – if you haven't – because this year for us, you know, it didn't snow for us. It didn't snow as much as it normally does. It only 100%. Snowed. Yeah, we only shoveled like three times where last year we shoveled 12 times. So the cash yep. flow is a little bit different. So if you need that cash flow – that early bird that's that that's definitely that's definitely a, a an, an idea um and, and so with with that um I, I like the idea of the texting too that's that's sweet the other thing about the the texting is my brother when he was doing his lawn care company a little bit he would send out like <coughs> estimates via text and yeah. and they could just click yes or no and like more people are on there texting than like email right and it's like boom i just push a text a, a button and then they they confirm that estimate so like it it freed it up and it went a little bit quicker because of it and that's for sure that really helps so yeah like quickbooks um like our software pro we, we surface autopilot it um it it helps a lot you can you can attach your quickbooks to it so do you have a okay. software program that has all your clients 
So I actually looked at, at Jobber and stuff like that, and I, I, I should have gone with, with uh, I guess it's still not too late, with Service Autopilot, but um, I kind of already uh, officiated everything. I really am on uh, Google Sheets. Okay. Um, yeah. Really, I, I took a couple of classes on that, so I feel feel really comfortable with that, yeah. and then QuickBooks, and okay. that's kind of where all my stuff is being held. But gotcha. yeah, Gotcha. So like, how, how do you do, okay, those 130 I guess my question to you is, of those 130, how are you going to, to build your routes? Do like put them in the exact order they should be? Does Google Sheets do that? So they don't. The, the, I guess the lucky thing is I've lived here my entire life, and so I'm looking at all of these these routes here, and I have the ones that you know have a fence and need my 36 stand on. Yeah. Or I have yeah. the ones I got. A, I got basically a trailer with two 60s, and then I got some smaller ones as well that go in the smaller ones. So mm-hmm. I have them divided here into two lists, and. I don't know, maybe just because I've been in the area so long, but th- this is what makes sense to me Yeah. Uh, to put them in this. And then I go on Google Maps and I make the route for it just to make sure that it looks all good to me. Yeah. Um, and then that's where I divide it up into the two teams and we go from there. Okay. Yeah. No, th- I mean, that works. So like with, with Service Autopilot, when you have, let's say you have 30 to do that day between, let's just say 40 to do that day between two crews, you can yep. you click it and then it pops up on a map. And then you could put them okay. in any order you want, like very quickly. And then you can set that order, you know, for the next time. And then if you add a couple throughout the day, throughout the week, you can you can change it. I'm not trying to get you to service autopilot, but if you're trying, no, to, it, it, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, it really does. The only thing about it is you can add a lot of stuff and you can get pricey. But like the ba- I think the base is like 100 bucks a month. I, if if I if I had to do this business without a software program, whatever it is, okay, without a software program, and the guy who started Service Autopilot, he he had a lawn care company, he had 10,000 lawns he was doing, and then he started this. Holy smokes. Yeah, he's lawn care millionaire. He was like the first YouTube guy I ever watched on YouTube. Like he was the OG. <laughs> he's like the OG of every, and then okay. everybody else came along after that. But um, some software program where like us, we can send invoices, we can charge cards, we can um, send out um, bulk emails like quickly, very quickly, you know, okay. like filter yeah. it down. Like it, like right now we got like 600 clients that we've done in the last, you know, whatever, the last couple of years where we can filter yeah. it down who, who did spring cleanups three years ago, right? Who did okay. aerations? And so something that really helps, if Google Sheets works for you, then that's totally fine. But yeah, I, I would not be, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't I be able to run this, be able business, to run this business um, without it. Um, is it echoing? Yeah, sorry, you just uh, you just cut out for a second there, but you're back now. Okay, yeah, because it uh, I start I heard myself echoing, and I was like, I wonder. If, okay, so we're good. Yeah, but that I mean the Google sheet, yeah, Google sheets and QuickBooks, like as long as, long as it works, man, it works. Because that's yeah. that that's massive. You especially now that you're growing to 130, and that's 100 more yards. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a learning curve. The, the, like I said, I've told you before, if you're gonna switch over to Job or or, or Service Autopilot or something it's going to take a little bit of time, you know, and like the okay, spring yeah. rush might not be, <laughs> might not be the best, the best yeah, time to, yeah. the best time to switch over. Okay. So what is a, two more questions. What is the biggest struggle you've had to deal with or you may, last year, or maybe you, you, you foresee yourself seeing this next year? What's a struggle that you may, and I think I'm gonna have to deal with this or I've been dealing with. I, I would say the biggest struggle that I'm running into right now would be, you know, some of these clients I've either done for three years when we were just a couple of high school kids, and some of them I've done even before that just on my own since I was like 13. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, when I have to raise prices just because of how expensive things are, they're like, hey, you know, your mulch project this year was $200 more than last year or $100 more than last year. And so really just trying to, to engrave in the client's mind, like, you know, I'm, I'm not just a little kid anymore doing mm-hmm. this for cash. Like, I'm, I'm a business, and not only do I have to compete with my competitors, but you know, I'm paying people's, I'm, I'm paying people checks so that they can live. <laughs> like like yeah. this, is, this is a whole lot different than what it was before. So kind of finding the right way to do that with clients and, and not, not come across as like, Hey, you know, I'm just taking your money more, but this is essential. You know, I've, I've known you for instance, you know, Mrs. Whatever yeah. for, for 10 years and I'm not trying to rip you off here. I, I'm trying to give you the lowest price I can while I can still say, profitable and and my business can still flourish so that's one problem that i'm definitely running into um some people are like hey you know a a ten dollar raise in 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 mowing or whatever no big deal some people threw a little bit of a fit about it and and my dad is in in finances and and he's dealt with clients for you know 25 years and he said well zach you know if 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 a client's going to bicker over five or ten dollars then do you really want that client and i'm like well you know that that that's a good point so 
uh, just kind of explaining it to the best of my ability of why I'm raising prices. And if they still have a problem with it, then that's okay. You, you know, you can go find someone else to do it, but yeah. Yeah. And, and there's, there's going to always going to be people out there who, what you're raising my price two bucks. Like, ma'am, that's $60 mm -hmm. a year. Like if you're mm -hmm. not, if you, if you're worried about that, you're not going to do your, we're, we're not going to do your mulch. We're not going to do your bushes. We're not going to do your yep. aeration. You're just going to do the bare minimum and you're probably going to yep. complain the most. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, it's like, man, like, and then, you know, it's, you know, last year, I think we spent about 200 to $250 more in gas a week than we did the year before. Like that's, yeah. that's just the gas, you know? So like, yeah. and then like prices of mowers, when I, when I, when we first started four years ago, you know, prices of a mower was 11,000, 12,000. Now it's 13,000, 13 and yep. a half. So everything's going up. And, and I think if they, if they don't understand that, that's, that's not the client you want. And that's kind of how the yep. pumpkin plan, the pumpkin plan goes to, you want to find those, those, like you said, those core 50 clients. Cause I think I yep. mentioned it last time is, would you rather have 75 you know, okay clients, or would you rather have 50 core good Great. clients, yes. you know? So, yeah. you know, cause they're going to be more profitable. And then last thing is what is a goal for 2022? What's that? What's that? I mean, a couple goals if you have them. Yeah. Uh, I'll say definitely the thing that's lingering over my mind is finding a way to become a full service. So I don't, I, I'm not licensed in the fertilizer game. Uh, neither are my guys. So either, you know, towards the end, it really not this year, it's kind of a goal for next year, but yeah. um, opening up the fertilizer branch and just becoming a full service. I don't want any competition coming to my client's houses. You know, I, I want to be the guy. Plus, I'll say this, people love when they can call one guy for everything. Oh, people yeah. absolutely love that. Yep. Um, so that, that's definitely a goal for over the next year um, from now. Goal for this year, um, you know, I, I don't get overly caught up in, in the money. Um, Obviously, it's a business, so I have to be, but I'm really focused on growing the business. I'm not focusing on, you know, giving myself the biggest paycheck I can. But with that goals, I mean, I, we're looking to hit uh, my estimations are about 235,000 this year. And my goal for 2022 is, is 250, a quarter of a million yeah. um, in, rev in revenue. So that, that's a goal that I just keep pushing forward to kind of grind out. Okay, how many more mold jobs do I need to hit that? How many more weekly clients do I need? Um, so that's what I'm chasing right now. Um, and then on top of that, uh, uh, another goal would just be, um, to really figure out and solidify the mowing game. Like I said before. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So like that's, I, I've, I've said that a lot of times is your first three, four years of business. Like if you're taking big checks and you're not growing the business, like you're going to, you're going to see that like 10 years from now. Right. Exactly. It, or 100%. the way you're doing it, if you're taking as least amount as possible, you're going to see the benefits five, six, ten years from now. I'd be like, man, it wasn't even a sacrifice. Like I'm living as frugally as possible, and I'm paying my bills. I got I got a business that I'm growing, and and I'm putting everything back in the business. And as long yep. as you're building it right, as long as you're building the, the business the right way, then you're going to see the benefits from that long term and, and a business where you could have 20 25 years from now your kids can can take over so that's that's so smart because that's what we've done man me and my brother we took over three years ago and we have been <laughs> we've lived on as the least amount as possible but we're seeing the benefits this year you know where we are 100 seeing yeah. the benefits man that's yep. that's huge any uh, last last question is there any advice you'd give 15 16 17 20 year old who's thinking about a business. It doesn't have to be lawn care. You know, there's people on here that don't, I was talking about this on the end. You weren't on the phone call, but before the introduction, I was talking about a guy I talked to who I coached basketball. He, he's working for a painter and he's really considering starting a painting business. And yeah. what's some advice you'd give a 16, 17, 18 year old kid that, man, that, that you could, you could help along the way. Who's thinking about it. Oh, for sure. I, I, I'll tell, I'll tell you know, anyone who's listening to this. I wish that I was listening to someone like you, um, or even like where I am now when I was 15 or 16, 17, because, you know, I, I played sports and I played music and that was about it. <laughs> so I was like, I have no idea what I want to do with my life unless it's one of those two things. And when you kind of come to the realization, you know, most people aren't going to go play in the NBA or, or, you know, do stuff like that. I really had no idea what I wanted to do. So, uh, my advice would be, you know, if, if you are really into something, go for it, man, at least, at least try it out. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't throw yourself into something that, that you, you, you can't handle, but seek counsel that people who have done it before you, who can really be honest with you, like, Hey, I think you have what it takes or, Hey man, I, you, you really don't have what it takes. I think you should go do something like this. 
Um, but really finding what you love. You know, one guy told me, find what you love and sell it. Man. He said that, 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 that's how you'll enjoy stuff. And I said, well, okay. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, finding the lifestyle that you want to live. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I'm a believer and I, I really, really believe in the family life. So, you know, five years down the road, I would love to love to have kids and, 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 and be married and just really enjoy the home life and being a, a business owner is one thing that you can do to enjoy that. So finding the lifestyle you want to live and finding a, 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 a career that goes along with it is huge. But yeah, yeah. I love, I love owning a business. There yeah. we go. Yeah. It's so, it's just such a, it's such a, an experience, right? It's such a, a ride. Sometimes it's up. Sometimes you're working sun up to sun mm. down and it's rained two, two days that week and now you're behind. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yep. then there's other times where, I mean, you know, you look back and be like, dude, I learned so much from that, man. That that's huge. Yep. I, the kids, you know, they, they, you know, high school kids tell them all the time, you got to be high school kids. You got to enjoy your life. For you, sure. you, you know, you're going to be working 100%. the rest of your life, but there has to come a point where you get serious, right? You, you have to yep. come, you have to become serious at some point in your life. Some people never get serious. They're 60 years old and they, they never, they never got serious about life and they have nothing to show for it. Um, yep. that that's huge, man. And, and I, I really, you know, like I said before, I feel like, you know, I'm talking to a, uh, my, the same age as me, you know, I, I it's scary. <laughs> well, thank you, man. <laughs> it's scary to think, you know, when you get become 30, when you're 10 years from now, like where, where are you going to be? And you might, you might think now, man, I want a $5 million business when I'm 30. But then two years down the road, when you do maybe have a family start or starting a family five years, you're like, I don't know if I want that goals change. Yeah. yeah I tell that all the time. Yep. Goals change. Some people 100%. do, some people don't, but Hey man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on being patient. I know we, we tried to get this call a couple weeks ago, but Hey, I think, I think this conversation really helped guys, man. And, and I, I'm, I'm scared and excited for you to see what you are going to be <laughs> in, in a year from now, you know, talking to yeah. you in a year from now and saying, dude, I hit my goal of 250. I, I hit yeah. that goal or I didn't, but we learned so much. So and this is what, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Hey, hey, man, I appreciate it. Zach, hey, right? Zach, Zach, yep, yep. James, I, I appreciate it. If anyone's listening, listen to this guy, James. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. He know, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, I, I know what I'm talking about because I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> hey, yeah. there, there we go. Learn hey, fa- failure, failure's a good thing. There exactly. we go. Exactly, exactly. All right, man. Hey, the book of the week is the 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 one thing. So if you haven't read that book, brother, okay, read read that book by Gary Keller. It's about What's your ten-year goal? What is your ten-year goal? How? To, what's the okay. most important thing to do today to reach that goal? Because so many times, right, we're doing stuff that doesn't really move the needle. You know, um, for sure. So, hey, man, well, what's it called again? One thing. Yeah, the one thing by Gary Keller. It's a. It's there we a really, go. I'm really, reading E Myth right now. So when I finish ooh, that, I'll move on to the next one. Dude, there we go. That's another dude. That's that's top five, top six books for me. <laughs> Love that book. All right, man. Hey, I appreciate it. All right, appreciate it. Yep. Yep. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Woo, I got to step up my game. That guy's going to pass me. 50 yards yesterday. I mean, 50 yards last week, 130 now. Four employees, a couple trucks. If that doesn't motivate you to get off your butt and do something, I don't, I don't know what will. It's warm outside. I'm looking out the, win- I'm looking out the door because I actually have the door open, and, and I just want to go out and cut grass. I want to go out and do some bushes, do some mulch. Um... Hey, that kid, that guy is killing it. Not a kid. That man is killing it. Like I said, he sounds like he's 30, but he's only 20. And you might be in that situation three years ago where he had a couple lawns he was doing, or you were, you maybe did some scrapping, or you had this this thing you're doing, and you might, hey, can I turn it into something? And yeah, you can. You can turn it into something. You can turn it into a, almost 250, a quarter of a million dollar business, um, 20 years old in college. Um, I love these conversations. I, I, I don't like having content where I don't have a phone call and I like having conversations and that's why, you know, you can learn from me, but having a conversation with someone, you're going to learn from these guys a lot more than you can learn from me. I appreciate him. Appreciate the phone call. If you want to get on a phone call, message me on Instagram, email the show, the good show at gmail.com. We have 2000 subs on, on, on YouTube. We're at about 6,000 downloads. The goal for 2022 is 10,000 downloads. Um, and no, 25,000 downloads. I'm sorry. 10,000 downloads is too easy. 10,000 subs on YouTube is the goal. So I appreciate you guys. My next com- the next, um, podcast will be, I think I'm going to do it on the deck of our cabin with my brothers and, uh, that'll be fun. So, Hey, if you like this, share it. If you didn't like it, share it. It's fine, guys. If you hate me, share it, dude. 
I'm fine with it. I got tough skin. I'm ready for the season. That was a good conversation. Have a good one.